People are dying on both sides. We needed to bring people together and understand we had a common experience and we're all hurting. But we don't need to segregate, go in our own groups that we feel comfortable with, such as the Blacks hanging out with the Blacks, the LAPD hanging out with the LAPD. Um, Felicia Fela, Lene Williams, and one of the chairpersons of the Compassion and Action Youth Summit. How do we keep it honest and civil? We were able to go into that dialogue, a compassionate dialogue with the Post for Peace and Justice. It was an amazing experience having youth come from all over the Los Angeles area, from North Hollywood, Los Angeles, Pinoca Park, um, Pasadena. We had a wonderful panelists uh, of singers, actors, community leaders, and uh, religious leaders too. Pastor Eddie Anderson and I will just tell a story. So it was in July, there had been two African American people, men, who were killed by the police. And I was called by some activists to come down to Levert Park. And I went down to Levert Park and I saw the people in the park and they were crying. And they asked me to pray and I didn't know what else to do. So I prayed and went home. But it kept bothering me that there was something that needed to be done. And then this quote came to mind. It's one of my favorite quotes by a theologian named Howard Thurman. And he said, do not ask what the world needs, but act that makes you come alive and go and do that. For what the world needs are people who have come alive. That quote stuck with me. So the next day I woke up and I called my friends who are activists of Black Lives Matter. And I told them, let's have a service at the church. And so the next day, we had a service at my church. We had about 500 people show up in my church from all races and creeds and faiths. And we prayed together and cried together and affirmed that our lives mattered. Compassion, you have to say, okay, my animal is hurt, is sick, I want to take care of it. So when you take care of it and you do something, that's an action. So compassion is love in action. And you take something and you now you, you help your, your pet, say your pet has a, um, a broken leg. And you help mend it and you carry it to the other side. That's compassion, you pick it up and help it get to the other side. You understand that? Love in action is compassion. What is it? Love in action is compassion. Okay, so now we gotta ask these leaders of our, of our community how they can have more love and take action to help us out. Because you know what's going on out here? Have you heard about some of the things that's going on with people getting shot on the streets and you know, police are being afraid of the, going to walk the streets too? Have you heard about some of that stuff that's going on and in, in in just out there in the news? Have you guys heard about this stuff? Are you familiar with Black Lives Matter? Are you familiar with the LAPD and how they're out there trying to, they're risking their lives out here and they're needing support and we need to support both sides, compassionate cops and the black lives? And how do we do that? How, do you guys have answers? Do you have any suggestions of how we can make that a better, how we can get this place more compassion back in the streets? Do you have any suggestions? How we can take love into action? Well, maybe by the end of the day you will, and your voices will be on this post, okay? So let's learn a few things about each other. Let's learn how we can be more compassionate, how we can be more loving, and let's hear from our panelists. Hello, and good morning. My name is Corey Palka. I am a police captain here in this community in Hollywood. Um, Hollywood has 400 police officers that serve this community. And I don't take the word service lightly. When I talk about service, I talk about servant leadership. Because our mission is to serve this community and to be leaders in this community. All of my officers' responsibility is to be a servant to the community. And we teach our officers to be vulnerable in conversation. So when we show up, even though we're in uniform and we're trained to deal with uh, issues that may cause harm, may cause harm to ourselves or others, and when we break those vulnerability walls down and are able to show compassion and we, sh and we 
talk to young men and women or people in the community with a voice of servant leadership, of service, then we're compassionate with each other because we've broken the walls and we have great communication. It takes a lot of work. It's a difficult business that we're in. But we strive every day to be servant leaders. And the reality is the next generation of police officers are here in this room. Many of my officers who are here were sitting in these chairs in some capacity when they were younger. And through their ability and want and desire to serve this community, they became police officers. Sometimes it doesn't go well. There's things you see on TV that are ugly. But 99.9% .9 of the times we serve with such good hearts and we communicate great things to those who we wish to serve, which is you. So I say thank you for having us here today. As a teacher, as an educator, my job is to show you that you guys can do anything at all. Everybody that said it is perfectly exactly what I'm feeling. The love and passion for all of you. Again, like I said before, you have little bodies. It doesn't matter. You have great big ideas. So just put it into action on your own. You can't do it. Don't let anybody say no, you can't. And don't let yourself say no, you can't. Does that make sense? I hear somebody, the grown ups. I don't want, sorry, I love you, grown ups. Kids, can you say yes, I believe in myself? Yes, yes I believe in myself. I Thank heard you. Yes. All right, there you go. Because communication is a two way street. If we never talk to a person who we have issues with, how will we know how to solve them? Growing up in Miami, did I have my issues with police officers? Yes. Was I racially profiled? Yes. But that didn't make me look at police officers any different. I look at them as they, they're trying to protect and serve. Thank you all. Y'all can stop clapping. Y'all like, who is Willie Mack? Why do we have to clap for this guy? <laughs> Yeah, the name sounds cool, y'all clap because the name sounds cool. So, compassion and action to me. Well, let me first start off by, by saying this. I'm glad to see all of you all here today. This is a huge step for you all just to be here. Like, we, we grew up in one of those societies where people can look down on us because of maybe what we believe, our race, or whatever. But I want to let you all know, for one, it's not impossible because you're possible each and every single one of you are. Before I executively produced and put the money into a Lionsgate film, before I flipped my first house and bought it and sold it and did it a few times, before I did all of that, I used to be homeless and slept on a bus stop bench every other night. And people always looked at me as, oh, he's never going to be anybody because I was sleeping on a bus stop bench. I was homeless. But I always believed in myself and because of that, I look at each and every single one of you all, and I see you all are the next generation of whatever you all want to be, you all can do. And together, we're going to do amazing works. So that's who I am. I'm Willie Mack. Thank you all. So one by time, how y'all feeling? All right. My name is Sari Ivan. I'm uh, an artist, a performing artist, mainly of, of music, but also of theater. Um, I am also an educator and activist in certain respects. Um, and I'm here today to be in solidarity, right? The post that I'm facilitating is about solidarity with black lives. And I, I think that the root of solidarity is about compassion and action. And the best way to articulate that in solidarity is to show up and ask how can I serve you, right? I, I care, and what action that I can take will best serve you and your cause. Calls, something that you're passionate about. I'm, ask, I, I'm just jumping out of, out of sync right now, but I have a question. What are you passionate about? Can somebody tell me what they're passionate about? Anybody, anybody? Let's join together for food. But let's take that, that, that is a cause, because are there children hungry on the streets? So when we come together to support, that's what solidarity is, when everybody comes together. That's a new word, vocabulary. Compassion to me is living God life. I like to set examples of how I live my life, and I definitely so, try to live it God life. I would like for everybody that's around me to Live by, I live by example, and I want them to learn from my example. And uh, the youth that I work with, you know, that's all I want them to know is that 
whatever you want to do in life, you can do it. There's no reason for you not to be able to do it in the field that you can because we already have conquered one thing. We have a black president. So there's no reason for us to feel that we cannot accomplish what we want to accomplish in this world. Well, so compassion is, in, in other words, we can say God, we can say love, we can say believing. These are all elements of what compassion is. Think about the golden rule. You know about the golden rule? My name is Dr. Marissa. They call me the Asian Oprah. And the first thing I'd like you to do is to look at the person next to you in the eye, smile, shake their hand, and welcome them to Compassion in California, Youth in Action. Someone you don't know, someone you think is cute, whatever you like. And compassion to me is starting with compassion for yourself. I get to speak all over the world. One of them, I love warping young minds and uh, speaking to youth. One of the things that seems to be in common, around age 10, you have this message that somehow you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not good looking enough. How many of you have that voice? Okay, thank you for being honest. I want you all to look at me right now in the eye. You are all precious children of this universe. It is a friendly universe, no matter what it looks like, no matter what CNN or the constantly negative news says, you can accomplish anything you put your mind and heart to. That's compassion for yourself. I just mean the people of the world that are uh, confronting each other, whether they're fighting over religious beliefs or it's the police uh, having uh, you know, challenges with the public and vice versa, whatever it may be, it's usually coming out of some, some type of fear. And so I'm just wanting to know that I'm safe, that the universe is safe, and connect with other people. Uh, being a multiracial person, my father is black. Well, he's passed away. He, he knew Martin Luther King Jr. He worked with Martin Luther King Jr. And he was a black man that tried very hard to get me to embrace being black. And it was very intense because it was like, why is this so important, Dad? You know, well, you know, he was, he, he grew up in a time when uh, a lot of crazy stuff was happening. Not, not like, you know, it isn't happening now. But my point is that my mother was white and that means that I'm both, I'm not one or the other, but it's not about that because there's no, nobody here that's 100% anything. We're all multiracial, okay? And so uh, this is a topic that I think uh, is interesting to talk about and I believe compassion is very important. When we break those vulnerability walls down and are able to show compassion and we, sh and we talk to young men and women or people in the community with a voice of servant leadership, of service, then we're compassionate with each other because we've broken the walls and we have great communication. It takes a lot of work. It's a difficult business that we're in. But we strive every day to be servant leaders. And the reality is the next generation of police officers are here in this room. Many of my officers who are here were sitting in these chairs in some capacity when they were younger. And through their ability and want and desire to serve this community, they became police officers. Sometimes it doesn't go well. There's things you see on TV that are ugly. But 99.9% .9 of the times we serve with such good hearts and we communicate great things to those who we wish to serve, which is you. So I say thank you for having us here today. When I arrived here this morning, I took a quote out of the box and the quote was, we judge what we don't understand. Okay. So you all are going to be change makers. What are you guys going to be? Change Amen. And so what if sharing Black Lives Matter was a way to say, I love you, to the slaves that built this country, but were never thanked. Black Lives Matter. What if it were a way to say thank you to those who gave their lives to bring equality in human relationships, in civil rights, in education, and economic opportunity? Black Lives Matter. What if simply acknowledging Black Lives Matter was one way to send love to the Black ancestors and their descendants, the current generation? A way to say thank you for being the glorious children of God that you are and have always been. Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm.